Three times World Footballer of the Year and World Cup hero, Zinedine Zidane wowed fans and terrified opponents with his divine skills during a career that has spanned more than two decades. Arguably the best player ever to come out of France, Zidane, or Zizou, as he is affectionately known to fans around the world, enjoyed an epic career that few could match. His brilliant ball control, incredible vision, precise passing and ability to read the game took football to another level. On the field, he was a general, leading his side by example through a perfect cross or a sizzling strike. He was never far away from the action. Off the pitch, he has been just as impressive. Tireless in his charity work for those less fortunate than himself, he is also a devoted family man. Zinedine's incredible journey began in La Castellane, one of the poorest immigrant quarters of the French city Marseille. Marseille is home to over 1.6 million residents, making it the second most populous French city. Born to Algerian parents, Zinedine took to football immediately. He was often seen honing his ball skills in dimly lit alleyways for hours each day, and it soon became clear that he was destined for something special. Many football aficionados believe that it was Zinedine's tough start in a rough neighbourhood that furnished him with the mental toughness to handle the pressures of first-class football. At an early age, he joined US St. Henri, a local club in his hometown of Le Castellan. Then, at the age of 14, he displayed his sublime talent at the first year junior selection for the league championship, where he caught the eye of many League One clubs, in particular AS Khan. Originally intending to spend six weeks with Le Dragon Rouge, young Zizou ended up staying four years. During his time, he made his League One debut as a 17-year-old. However, it wasn't until he was transferred to Bordeaux that he really began to shine. During his four-year stint at Bordeaux, Zinedine played 139 games and scored 28 goals. His brilliant performances earned him selection for Le Bleu, the French national team. Zinedine's performances domestically and internationally started to generate a huge amount of hype, and it wouldn't be long before the big clubs of Europe came after him. In the end, it was Champions League winners and Italian super club Juventus that snatched up the 24-year-old for a mere 3 million euros. Juventus immediately recognised the attacking midfielder's potential. With the help of Zinedine's attacking skills, Juventus won the 1996-97 Scudetto and the International Cup with a 1-0 win over River Plate. In the following seasons, he led the Italian club to the 1997 and 1998 UEFA Champions League finals. Unfortunately, however, they ended up losing both, going down to Borussia Dortmund 3-1 in 1997 and then Real Madrid 1-0 in 1998. Despite these disappointing results, Juventus and their number one recruit were still able to claim their second consecutive league championship winning the Scudetto in 1997-1998. In three short years, Zizou went from being a good player with potential to becoming one of the best players in the world. While at Juventus, he made 151 appearances, scoring 24 times. He also helped them to a tally of six titles. Playing the best football of his career, it was only a matter of time before he got the call from Spanish giant Real Madrid. With Juventus keen to hold on to the emerging superstar, Real were forced to dig deep to get their man. Luckily, the Spanish super club had money to burn, and in 2001, they sealed the deal with a world record transfer fee of approximately 78 million euros. During the first quarter of his handsome four-year contract with Real, Zinedine did not disappoint his new club. He played a major role in winning the Whites an impressive two titles for the season, including Real's successful UEFA Champions League campaign. Zizou was more than happy with the victory. Yes, it's true that for me, it was my third final, I had lost two, so 
It's true that for me, it was the third final, and I had already lost two, so it was mandatory that I should win this one. I believe it is a great satisfaction for the team to have this great and difficult victory. His steely determination was instrumental in Rail's 2-1 victory over Bayer Leverkusen to claim their ninth UEFA Champions League title. The match was hotly contested throughout. Zinedine Zidane scored the winning goal in the 45th minute after volleying a left foot shot that streaked into the top corner. Deservedly, Zuzu was named man of the match. No, but I think the most important thing was I think the most important thing was to be able to win the Champions League. The thing to do now is to rest a little bit and then think about the World Cup, hoping that it is going to be a good World Cup. At Real, Zinedine played 155 games, scoring 37 goals. He played his last game for the Whites on May the 7th, 2006, but not before winning six titles with the Spanish club. Holding a dual citizenship, Zinedine Zidane could choose whether to play for Algeria or France. However, on August 17, 1994, at the age of 22, the decision was made for him when he was handed his first international cap for France in a friendly against the Czech Republic. Zizou made an immediate impact scoring twice to salvage a 2-2 draw. Only a few months later, his international career was given a big leg up after French playmaker Eric Cantona received a 12-month suspension in January 1995 for assaulting a fan. Cantona's misfortune catapulted Zinedine into the limelight and from there he never looked back. In Euro 1996, France's new playmaker led them all the way to the semi-finals, where they were eliminated by the Czech Republic in a penalty shootout. Although he hadn't scored in the tournament, Euro 96 gave him a taste of life at the top end and an understanding of what was expected at international level. Two years later, he was given the opportunity to show the world his skills in another international tournament, the 1998 FIFA World Cup. Needing little encouragement to flaunt his prodigious talent, he hogged the spotlight, creating spontaneous and exciting plays and leading Le Bleu all the way to the World Cup final. With the scene set for a tense, colossal final between the reigning champions Brazil and hometown favourites France, the whole world tuned in, expecting the Brazilians to emerge as victors. Zinedine Zidane had other ideas scoring two remarkable goals in the first half to set up a 3-0 whitewash over the much-fancied Brazilians. He single-handedly won his country its first ever World Cup. Not surprisingly, he was the toast of France. I have little to say except thank you for your wishes. Take care and enjoy the moment. After the hype of their 1998 World Cup victory, France struggled to repeat the performance in the tournaments that followed. And after a disappointing 2002 FIFA World Cup, France set their sights on Euro 2004. Finishing at the top of their group, it seemed that the World Cup hangover was finally starting to lift. However, their quest for the European Cup ended in the quarterfinals upon losing 1-0 to eventual winners Greece. Zinedine's next tournament was the 2006 FIFA World Cup and with two World Cups behind him, he already knew what it took to win. Their tempestuous passage through to the semi-finals involved a two-game suspension for Zizou who redeemed himself by scoring the only goal in a 1-0 win against Portugal. France would play Italy in the final. The game got off to a frantic start, with both teams scoring in the first 20 minutes. However, no other goals were scored for the rest of the game, and in the 110th minute, the intense pressure got the better of Zinedine. In what can only be described as a mental meltdown, he suddenly stopped, turned and rammed his head into Matarazzi's chest, 
knocking the Italian to the ground. Zidane received a red card. His football career was over. To make matters worse, France eventually lost to Italy in a penalty shootout. For his actions, Zinedine was read the riot act. Zinedine Zidane has been suspended for three matches and fined with 7,500 Swiss francs. However, that's the big important information. The committee has taken note that Zinedine Zidane has ended his international career and has taken note of Zinedine Zidane's gesture to do three days of community service within the FIFA humanitarian activities. However, after the evidence surfaced that Zinedine had been unfairly provoked by Matarazzi, pressure was put on FIFA to consider punishing the Italian. Much to the delight of the French fans, Matarazzi was also handed down a suspension. Due to the repeated provocations, Italy's Marco Materazzi will be suspended for two matches with his national team, and he has been fined with 5,000 Swiss francs. Although it ended on a sour note, Zinedine's international career had been nothing short of extraordinary. While his name may always be tarnished by the incident that ended his dreams of a second World Cup, his ability to lead his team to victory in major tournaments by setting up and scoring crucial goals was second to none. <laughs>
Et, euh, et, euh, et je pense que c'est... I think that ultimately, the most intriguing thing is when we realize that there are children in the world who still have nothing to eat. When we look at that, it is something we cannot let continue. Everyone at some level can do something about it. Chacun, chacun à son niveau, s'il peut faire quelque chose, ben, ben c'est bien. Held only a few days before Christmas, the Real Madrid superstars were determined to bring some Christmas cheer to children who desperately deserved it. The proceeds from the first two matches have benefited anti-poverty projects in Brazil, Comoros, Guinea-Bissau, Haiti, Morocco, Namibia, Sri Lanka and Vietnam. So Ronaldo and Zidane have invited their friends, they play a match and they send a message to the world that they want to fight against poverty and that we can win the battle against poverty. They fight for achieving the Millennium Development Goals, which mean by 2015 we need to have the hunger and poverty in the world and we can do it. And that's the message that they sent and we're very grateful to them that they want to do that in their free time. Also taking part in the match were Bulgarian striker Dimitar Berbatov, Egyptian striker Abu Tarika, German comedian Oliver Posha, Brazilian Rivaldo and teenager Freddy Ardu. More recently, Zinlin took his charity campaign to Thailand. There he spent three days attending the opening of a home for street children and played in a charity soccer match with Egyptian youngsters. The trip was sponsored by the French food manufacturing company Danone. In cooperation with Egypt's National Council for Childhood and Motherhood as part of an international project to help disadvantaged children. The project is intended to provide some of those children with homes as well as basic health care, education and job training. Zinedine Zidane has flown all around the world spreading the football gospel wherever he goes. He has also travelled extensively in his capacity as an ambassador for good causes. He contributes to many charities, including those set up to help rebuild and renovate hospitals in Algeria that were devastated by a 2003 earthquake. In 2006, he went to Algeria, the homeland of his parents, to visit these hospitals. He was welcomed at medical centres in Thenia, Burmedis and Algiers, where he saw facilities funded by the charities he supports. In Thenia, 45 kilometres east of Algiers, he visited a children's hospital and was mobbed by fans who'd waited outside to see him. In Burmedis, he inspected a children's day nursery where he thrilled the youngsters by taking part in a kickabout football match between two teams of children. Political strife is always a danger for Bumeris on the edge of the Kabylie region, where Zinedine's parents come from. The area is rife with anti-government Islamist rebels. Although tension is at much lower levels than at the height of the bloodshed in the 90s, clashes between the army and guerrillas frequently occur in surrounding forests, hills and valleys. At Mustafa Hospital in Algiers, while visiting a children's ward, the star was told how donations of medical equipment had aided local people. He had helped to raise relief funds by taking part in a charity football match in France. The 2003 disaster was a heavy blow to Algeria, a country trying to pull itself out of years of violence, which has killed up to 200,000 people and also caused billions of dollars in damage. It was back in the 60s that Zinedine's parents moved from Bumeris to Marseille in France, where he grew up. He'd last visited Algeria in 1986, but his long absence hadn't dented his popularity in a country desperate for a hero. Although he wasn't actually born in Algeria, he's revered as an icon of success by the struggling nation, and his visit boosted morale in all of the towns he visited. Continuing his work with children, he has also travelled to Sakabumi in Indonesia to meet the Danone Nations Cup Indonesian team. An initiative of Group Danone, the Danone Nations Cup is a world football tournament for 10 to 12 year old children from 40 different countries across the globe. 
it comprises 40 national tournaments and a world final overseen by FIFA. Each year, 40 teams qualify to represent their country at the world final. Zinedine Zidane is the event's highest profile supporter. His visit was also aimed at promoting the game to children. Although badminton is still the nation's most popular sport, the popularity of football is growing in Indonesia. The trip also coincided with Indonesia's hosting of the Asian Cup. During his visit, the French star took time out to play with the kids in a three-minute match of futsal, or miniature soccer, on a stretch of street in the Indonesian capital. Hundreds of people crowded around the venue, cheering on their hero by his nickname Zizu. He also met Jakarta governor Sutiyoso, who predicted that Zinedine's visit would increase the confidence that Indonesia is safe to visit. On the last day of his visit to Algeria, he was awarded the Medal of National Merit, the highest distinction of the state, by Algerian President Abdelaziz Bouteflika during an official ceremony at Palais de Pupil. President Abdelaziz presented him with the award in recognition of the example he sets for the country's youth. The medal was also proof of the high regard in which he is held by the Algerian people. For them, the medal was an opportunity to simply say thank you. And it's not just the Algerian people who would like to thank Zinedine Zidane. Fans all over the world are in debt to the Frenchman for a career that entertained football enthusiasts for more than two decades. The 1998 World Cup hero continues to lead by example, proving that fame and fortune bring with them the responsibility of becoming a positive role model.